Are you ready to create some amazing Pinterest pins to market your incredible content? If so, you're going to wanna stick with me because in this video, I'm going to break it all down step by step. You're going to learn the secret recipe to creating eye-catching Pinterest pins. I'm gonna share with you my best headline tips, some super sneaky stock photo secrets, some graphic design rules and principles that you need to follow. And I'm going to show you a single thing that you can do to your pins to increase your click-through rates by up to 80%. By the end of this video, I know that you are going to be so inspired to jump into Canva and start creating your next or first set of Pinterest pins. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Kristen and this channel is all about simplifying branding and graphic design so that you can look and feel professional online without being a trained designer or wasting tons of time that you don't have fiddling around in Canva. When you're not a trained graphic designer, the thought of designing Pinterest pins that actually look good can be pretty overwhelming. Oftentimes you're stuck in Canva, moving things around, trying to get your images to look just right. And you and I both know that you have zero time to waste. Before we dig in, I wanna make sure that you have everything that you're going to need to create Pinterest pins in Canva. The first thing that you are going to need is content. Every pin image that you create needs to have a URL that you are sending your traffic to. I would assume if you're here with me on this video that you already have some amazing content that you are ready to get eyes on. The next thing that you need are some catchy headlines. I recommend having three to five different headline options that you are ready to add onto your pin images. Lastly, you need a design software. I love, use, and 100% recommend Canva. The free version is going to be just fine, especially if you're just getting started, but eventually I can almost guarantee that you're going to be ready to up level to the pro version of Canva and unlock all of their fancy design tools. I want to simplify the whole entire pin design process. Most Pinterest pins are made up of four design elements. The first design element is going to be your stock photo, your image, the picture that you're going to use on your Pinterest pin. The second design element is going to be your text headline. The third design element is going to be your call to action. And the fourth design element is going to be your logo or text URL. Each one of these elements has its own set of rules to follow and things that you're going to want to implement design and marketing wise to ensure that your pins are optimized and designed to convert. Once you have your content ready to go, a handful of juicy headlines and your Canva account, it's time to start designing. Let's jump into Canva and get to work. To create a document, just click this purple create a design button, type in Pinterest, and you'll see some options to choose from. You'll choose the first option, which is 1000 pixels wide and 1500 pixels tall. So this isn't some random size either. The two to three ratio is very close to the golden ratio, which has been known for being the most beautiful and aesthetically pleasing shape for centuries. Considering Pinterest is a visual platform, this is no surprise. Once your canvas is open, you'll see a bunch of pre-designed templates over here on the left. I highly recommend using templates when you're getting started. It's going to save you tons and tons of time. Most of these templates are free to use for all Canva users, so do keep in mind that they're often pretty generic and can get overused. There's also not a ton of consistency in these templates. All of the design styles are different, so if you're going to use any of the templates, look for ones that are similar in style so your pins have some consistency. If you want to ensure that your pins look unique enough to stand out in the Pinterest feed, there are tons of templates you can find outside of Canva. This is a great investment for your business because you can reuse them over and over and over. When you purchase templates, you're given a link that will automatically upload them straight into your own Canva account. It's super simple. This is by far my favorite bundle of templates. And as you can see, they all look unique but still have a similar style to them. There are stock photos already in place, so I can get a good idea of what types of images might work well for any given template. There are a ton of different layout options to choose from, so these types of template bundles make creating pins super simple. 
once you have some templates that you feel are going to work well with your specific content and the headlines that you came up with, it's time to go on a stock photo hunt. Your stock photos have a lot to do with the end result of your pin image, so it's important that you choose them wisely. Canva has an extensive stock photo library, but do keep in mind that all of the Canva users have access to the same library, so oftentimes some of these images are a little bit overused. If you want to create unique pin images that fit your own brand, then I highly recommend that you pop off of Canva and explore some stock photo websites. There's plenty of free and paid options to choose from. I'll drop a link to a few of my favorites in the description. Investing in a set of stock photos that fit your overall vibe and tone is going to be incredibly valuable and 100% worth it. And they're going to make your pins look crazy professional. It's really important to consider how you're going to integrate text into the stock photo. Look for images that have a natural white space, which is a perfect canvas for adding text, or think about the different design techniques that you can apply to the stock photo to ensure that your text is readable on the pin. You also want to avoid stock photos that have a lot going on or are super busy. This is going to detract from any text that you put on the pin image. Stay away from photos that are overused or look too generic. One big part of designing efficiently is keeping all of your assets and elements organized. So I highly recommend that you create a folder inside of Canva where you can keep all of your stock photo options handy. This way, when it comes to integrating them into your layout, you have them all in one place and you can see exactly what you have to work with. It's safe to start testing out some stock photos to see how they work in each layout. Again, you want to think about how you're going to incorporate the text into the photo or how you're going to incorporate the photo into the layout. The next step is to add your text headline to your pin images. There are a few things that you need to keep in mind as you work with text. You of course want to use your own brand fonts if you've got them. This is going to help create that visual consistency and help your viewers recognize and start remembering your Pinterest content. You want to make sure that you include keywords into your headlines and that your keywords stand out from the other text on your pin. This is a way to get into your viewer's head. You wanna think about what kind of search terms they might be typing into that search bar and use those exact keywords or phrases in your pin headline text. You want to draw attention to these words by making the text larger. Maybe you use a different font or put a block of color behind the word. Whatever you do, you want to make sure that these words are literally jumping off of your pin. And probably the most important thing to keep in mind is that your headline needs to be readable. A lot of pinners are using Pinterest from their smartphone like me when I'm hiding in the closet from my kids, haha. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that your text is not too small, you're not using a highly decorative font, and any elements on your pin can be seen even at this small size. You can add even more pizzazz to your headlines by adding in a buzzword or some flavor text. Buzzwords are going to be different depending on what niche you're in, but they are catchy little words, super simple, stress-free, low budget, or keto friendly, just to give you a few ideas. Flavor text is additional text that is going to be added to your pin to support the headline. Your audience wants to know what is in it for them when they are looking for a solution to their problem. So the more information that you can provide on your pin image without overwhelming them, of course, the better. You always wanna to remember to include your logo or text URL. Your logo is not intended to be part of the design, but more of a branding element that is going to help your viewers start to recognize you and your amazing content on Pinterest. By now, you probably have some pretty decent looking Pinterest pins, but if you are super serious about increasing your website traffic, growing your email list, or selling more digital products or courses, then you're not gonna to wanna to miss this part. The 
truth is, is that your audience doesn't know exactly what you want them to do with your content. You actually have to tell them what you want them to do. And this can be done by incorporating a call to action on your pin images. A call to action is a short phrase that gets your viewers to engage with with your content and take action. And this is where the real traffic comes from. Depending on your business goals, your call to action can be a variety of things. Read the full blog post, download the free guide, see the full list, get started, register today, take the challenge, join the Facebook group, watch the free video training, listen to the podcast. All of these are examples of call to actions that can be used to encourage your viewers to click into your content. You can add a simple text-based call to action to your Pinterest pins, but my favorite way to get viewers to take action is to include some type of digital mock-up. I promise you, you do not want to skip this step, even if you don't have any products or haven't started your email list yet. Since your call to action is usually one of the last things that your viewers see, it's a good idea to include it in the lower third of your pin image. Now that we've covered all of the essential elements that go into creating the perfect Pinterest pin, it's time to touch on a few graphic design housekeeping rules. There are lots and lots of graphic design rules and principles to follow, but I'm going to share with you the top three that I believe are going to make the most impact in your pin images. Number one is alignment. I see this mistake all the time. When you are creating Pinterest pins, or any graphic for that matter, you wanna make sure that all of your text is properly aligned. When you're just getting started, using the center alignment is going to be the easiest, and it's probably going to result in better looking Pinterest pins. But you can align text to the left or to the right. Canva makes this super easy to do. Simply shift click through all of your text boxes and elements, hover over the position tool and click center. This is a really simple way to tidy up your pin images before you export them. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is the spacing of the elements on your pin. You don't want things to be too close to the edge or too close to each other in a way that causes your viewer to be a little bit agitated or confused about your message. The last but very big important design rule to keep in mind is contrast. You want to make sure that the text on your pin and the information that you are including is very, very readable. If you are using a dark background, make sure that you use a lighter text. If you're using a light background, go for darker text. You can even use contrast to help those keywords pop off of your headline. You can always use a color overlay or drop the transparency of a background image to make sure that there's enough contrast from your text and the background that your viewer is going to be able to read your headline. If your viewer can't read your pin or your layout is confusing, they're just going to keep on scrolling. Once you're happy with how your pin images look, go ahead and download them by clicking this button right here and either selecting JPEG or PNG. Then upload those pin images directly to your Pinterest account or embed them onto any web page or blog article on your website. If you really wanna take a shortcut and start creating amazing Pinterest pins, then you're definitely gonna wanna check out my pin design toolkit. The toolkit includes over 100 designer level pin templates, a catchy headline generator, so you're not gonna be stuck creating headlines, a copy and paste call to action content blocks so you never forget to add a call to action to your pins and tons of other video training and design resources that are going to help you create some amazing pins in less time. I'll drop a link to that in the video description and you can use the code YouTube for $10 off of the pin design toolkit. If you like this video and you want more branding and design tips and be sure to hit that subscribe button, give me a huge thumbs up and let me know what your biggest takeaway was in the comments. I cannot wait to see what you create. Bye!